Hey everybody, Chris here. So on this July 4th weekend, I'm in the United States enjoying a holiday weekend in Canada. I just had Canada Day and other countries are having other holidays uh, this weekend or if you're not uh, where you are, that's okay. Uh, but things kind of slow down when the United States is on a big holiday. However, the crypto market, it's 24 seven. It just keeps going. So, but it slows down, right? It slows down a little bit, but today, today's video is really about exchanges and getting your crypto off exchanges. Now, I know there's some of you that want to keep crypto on exchanges. You can quickly sell or you've got some limit orders uh, set for for sales if a price reaches a certain point. And that's all well and good. And I would suspect that you might want to do that with a small part of your portfolio, but not the major part of your portfolio. There's a lot of negative news out there right now. There's a lot of stuff going on with, with a lot of exchanges and uh, other uh, capital groups and hedge funds and things like that. And we're going to get into some of that in this video. But the overall message is get your crypto off exchanges. Just don't leave them there because uh, th there are chances that your crypto can get locked up and you can't have withdrawals. Uh, and the, the, I think the second uh, thing is really stop using leverage. If you're if if you're using leverage, it just uh, crypto is risky enough as it is. And if you're compounding it with leverage, or you're trying to uh, you're trying to, to to make huge gains back real quick, and crypto will make you gains as it has shown in the past. That will come again. We just have to wait out this crypto winter that we're in. And I believe crypto will be back and gains will be made. However, if you're trying to get it all back at once, or you're just going into DeFi and trying to hit the moon with one of these uh, one of these tokens, all risky, risky, risky. I mean, how much risk do you want? Some say, hey, it's crypto, only invest what you're willing to lose. Well, if you're really willing to lose it all, you can gamble all you want because that's really what it is. But for those that believe in cryptocurrency and you really want to make money, uh, the way to do it right, and I'm not a financial advisor, but is to is to invest in your crypto, buy the projects that you think are going to do well, that have real utility and have real projects behind them, and then just store store those cryptos in a wallet. And you bought it at the price you bought it. I mean, that's what it is, right? You made the best decision at that time. This is the price. This is this is how much I'm going to pay. I think this is a good price for what this project is. And you put it away. Are, are they mistakes? Well, it's only a mistake if you see that there's a risk, a, a huge risk or a problem, but you invest anyway. And then when that risk or problem becomes major, where there's a rug pull, uh, insolvency or something like that, and you lose your money, well, that's on you. And I, that that's just the way it is. For those that are in Dogecoin, though, I mean, Doge is a legitimate project and isn't going to become insolvent. It just It's just not. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Doge, but just don't leave the Dogecoin on the exchanges. So how did this all happen? Why are we here? Why are we talking about these uh, these uh, extra risks for exchanges? And why is there so much talk across crypto world about Celsius and Voyager and even uh, crypto.com and what's going on? Where is all this all this coming from? So uh, let's get into the, the news on those. And let me tell you what I'm looking at. So I'm going to start here with Luna, and I'm starting with Luna because this has become the catalyst, I think, for sort of this domino effect that's been happening with with exchanges and uh, th those dealing with leverage, because a lot of those leveraged uh, or companies dealing with leverage were invested in Luna. And so we start with Doquan. Now that's not to mean that crypto was already going down. It already was. So so the price of crypto is not really what I'm talking about here, but I'm talking about the Celsius, the, the Voyager, and, and these companies right now 
that are in positions of possibly getting liquidated or bought out or whatever. And it all comes back to Doquan and Luna because Three Arrows Capital, a Singapore-based crypto investment company, they defaulted on Monday after failing to repay more than $670 million in crypto loans. They said that they lost $200 million that they had invested in Luna. However, uh, it got worse for them because the price of everything was going down. So their leveraged positions, they weren't making money back. So that sort of compounded it. And three hours capital is huge. And so, uh, so with that, that was sort of one of the first dominoes that started to fall after, after the, the Luna collapse. So I start there. Then I go to Celsius. Now Celsius actively working on solutions. So I get that, but this guy, Alex Minsky, you, you got to be careful with some of these leaders because they have, they have uh, questionable pasts, let's say, uh, as, as, as Alex does. But for those that were putting money onto Celsius, right? You're trying to earn a, a, these huge percentages back. There's always a risk in that. There's always a risk in, in, in that because if they're not making the money back, right, because the whole crypto market was going down, that means that you, right, your money that you put on that network to gain 20%, 30%, 40%, whatever they said that they were going to be giving, that becomes at risk, right, because they don't have the money to back it up. And that's what happened with Celsius. Now, will that recover? And will these uh, will these solutions work? I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to take more uh, bailouts. You know, pe people, you know, other companies putting money into this. But because of this guy here, it's questionable whether whether people are going to put their faith in 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 this guy to make Celsius whole again. I don't know, and I don't I don't see anyone like FTX coming in and buying up Celsius. Some have looked at Celsius and looked at, at what Celsius has to offer and they're finding big holes, like billions of dollars. Like it's not worth the risk to buy out Celsius. So I don't know whether Celsius is gonna, is actually gonna make it through this or not. It could, but you know, and, and maybe they'll give pennies on the dollar, you know, back to back to people. I don't know. We then have Voyager. So crypto's brutal week ends with a trading halt and a bailout. So with Voyager, a lot of people have have coins on Voyager. And there was this uh, certainly aspect of Voyager that you could make money on Voyager, right? You can stake or, or earn right on, on Voyager and get extra money, extra coins. Again, that comes with a risk though. And that risk is that they got themselves in a situation where they had to suspend all trading deposits and withdrawals because they didn't have the backup. And it's really more about withdrawals. They didn't have, they didn't have the backup. So, um, that is so so that is a problem you know here we have here's what bitcoin has done and this this drop of bitcoin from 69000 back in november to where it is now below 20000 i mean that's a huge drop and so part of it is part of it is the drop but it's more about those that were buying on leverage and then getting getting margin called, getting liquidated as, as, as the price of Bitcoin was going down. Coupled with what I said earlier about the Luna collapse just makes for a tough situation. So, uh, so what's going on with Voyager? Here? So Voyager had issued a notice of default to Three Arrows Capital for failure to make the required payments to his previous disclosed loan of 15,250 Bitcoin and $350 million in USDC. So Voyager had, had taken your money that you had on Voyager, right? Because you're earning, right? You wanna earn this extra. 
they took that money, they lent it to Three Arrows Capital because they were going to make money off of that loan that they were given to Three Arrows Capital. But Three Arrows Capital is now getting liquidated. Voyager is not going to get this back. All this Bitcoin, USDC, they're not going to get back. Or they'll get some back, I don't know. So that leads us to BlockFi. What is going on with BlockFi? Well, BlockFi is very similar to Celsius in that they have an earn program. And I have supported BlockFi in the past. I have some Bitcoin on BlockFi and I'm earning some percentage interest on BlockFi because uh, I, I, let me say, I wasn't as educated as I am now, but I did have Bitcoin on BlockFi. It's still there. Um, I don't think BlockFi is having any of this uh, huge leverage challenge that Celsius has. And FTX has certainly shown a uh, support of BlockFi because they've looked at BlockFi's records and they don't see billion dollar holes in BlockFi. So FTX, so Sam Bakeman fried has said, this is worth investing in. This is the time when companies can grow like FTX can grow here now by investing in other companies that are down and possibly there being a buyout that could happen with BlockFi we don't know if that's going to happen yet maybe FTX is just taking a, uh, an invested uh, position and will make money off the deal or maybe BlockFi ends up becoming uh, part of FTX we'll see how that happens but um They've got a $400 million revolving credit line, as well as an option to acquire BlockFi at variable price up to $240 million. So uh, so that option there to acquire BlockFi, we'll see whether FTX does that or not. Um, but again, I've, I do have some Bitcoin on BlockFi and I have had a referral link to BlockFi before and some of you have used it. And I still feel very safe about BlockFi. Uh, I think BlockFi is in a challenging position now because a lot of people are saying, well, the same thing could happen to BlockFi as happened at Celsius. So I'm going to sell all that and get that off of BlockFi. That uh, people are thinking that. So there's a lot of withdrawals happening from BlockFi right now um, to try and to, to, to try and get your get your coins into your own wallets. So. And then what's happening with uh, Crypto.com? I just got this email where um, crypto.com has actually reduced the daily limit of, uh, of, of with your withdrawals. Um, they're tying it to their credit card. I, I think they're really trying to get people to, 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 to get into their crypto.com credit cards. But if you do not have a crypto.com Visa card, you're now limited to a maximum of $3,000 per day. So um, so be careful if you're on Crypto.com. The only thing I have on Crypto.com now is Crow. That's all I have left. Um, and it's staked and it's earning something just because I'm supporting the network. And it's not. It's not earning a lot. Now it's like, great. And the, the price of Crow is like, it's way down right now. But again, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, again, uh, only invest what you're willing to lose. I've got some on there. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, um, I tried out Crypto.com. I've said it before i don't really like the platform um we'll see what happens with crypto.com they spent a lot of money the past six months eight months uh buying naming rights to uh to, to the, the the la forum and uh and you know who knows where where the crypto.com is going to go but uh but, but be careful about that is is all i say so what do you do? What am I saying about this? Well, Trust Wallet. Uh, this is where I keep um, uh, some of my Doge. This is the one that I started with. This was my first wallet. It's a soft wallet, so it's on my phone. Uh, it's not a, a Ledger Nano uh, cold wallet, but it's a soft wallet. And I believe in it, and I think that it's fine. It's good to have. It's always with you if you want to spend uh, Doge. Uh, from from your uh, wallet, you can easily do that directly from Trust Wallet. So Trust is the one I've had the longest, and uh, and I believe in that, and uh, it's doing fine. I also use Exodus, and I I 
I use Exodus more as a cold wallet, uh, although it isn't actually a cold wallet, but, uh, but, but that's where I have most of my Doge and it, it works well. I just have, I have got a bunch of crypto that I've, uh, I bought on Binance.us. That's my trading platform uh, that I trade on here in the United States. I think Binance.us is the best trading platform in terms of uh, your, your, not only your limit orders, but your market orders as well, because they're such a big platform. Uh, you're going to get the price you want, as opposed to the Robin Hoods and Crypto.coms and others like PayPal's awful in terms of the spread and, you know, if you're going to buy and what you end up buying with the prices usually ends up so much higher than what the current price is because they've got these big spreads. But Binance US doesn't. So I have a link in the description below to join Binance.us and I highly recommend it. But then once you buy it, you can withdraw your cryptos into, uh, into wallets. So Trust Wallet, Exodus Wallet, and then for Dogecoin, I'm now using my Doge. And part of this was mostly because of uh, Twitter. And in order to have tipping on Twitter, uh, my Doge is great. There's also So Doge. I haven't used that yet. I'll probably start one of those as well, but I do have my Doge. And uh, I've talked about this recently. Um, I'm Chris on my Doge. And uh, this is what I will be using when I do my giveaway. Eventually, once I get to 6,900, uh, Twitter followers, I will be uh, giving out uh, tips to all my followers uh, that, that do certain things, retweeting and engaging with me on Twitter, will get free Dogecoin. And that's all going to come out of my Doge. So that's what I use. I use Trust. I use Exodus. I use I use uh, my Doge. Now, I also have some still on Robinhood. And I believe in Robinhood. I think Robinhood's going to be fine. If it gets bought out, it could. Uh, this is, again, the time of uh, that that there could be buyouts happening because companies are down. Coinbase is down. The, the stock price is so far down. Robinhood is down. And someone like FTX or Binance that are doing very well, they could buy out these companies that are hurting. Uh, that, that could happen. So, uh, but I feel, I feel safe with Robinhood and Weeble as well. I feel safe with Weeble. I've got uh, some Doge and, and others uh, still on Weeble. Uh, Weeble was great, I think, last year. Uh, got a lot of other people who just want to trade on, on apps on your phone. Um, and I do have a, a link in the description below to join Weeble. Um, and Weeble is uh, getting into the wallet uh, business as well. Uh, they're introducing wallets and you can actually uh, buy a, a, and, and, and sell on their platform as well as use their wallet. Uh, that they're that they are uh, introducing uh, similar to what Robin Hood did so but my doge is great uh, uh, great yeah I transferred actually from a bunch from trust wallet onto my doge so I could use that sort of as a working stash in my doge uh, but I, overall uh, this is about getting your coins off the exchanges. We don't know what's going to happen with these exchanges. Do I trust Binance? I do, and I still have some on Binance, but I don't leave it there. I put it into my wallets. So that's so that's what I do. So what happens out of all of this? Well, again, crypto winter. That's where we are right now. And we go in these cycles. Crypto is in these four-year cycles that go around the Bitcoin halving. That's just how crypto has been over the past three cycles, and we're now in that fourth cycle. What's going to happen going forward? We don't know. There's no guarantees, right? We don't know if there is even going to be a next crypto run. Everyone's guessing there will be probably next year sometime. We'll start to see the turnaround of crypto. Probably not a big bull run this year. I think there could be some resettling up uh, somewhat but not a huge run because that hasn't happened in the three previous Bitcoin cycles. And it all revolves around Bitcoin. But that doesn't mean that Dogecoin can't make its own run. As I, as I said before, I think Doge has the possibility of making a run on its own based on uh, its own situation. Big catalysts like Tesla and SpaceX and other things that could get a lot of people buying Doge and Doge could take off 
while the rest of the cryptos are still kind of going sideways or down because we've seen that before and that can happen again. Which is why I think Doge is a good place to have some of your investment. Again, not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So that's my take on, uh, on exchanges and what's going on in, in the markets and why there's so much FUD and uncertainty in, in, in these uh, uh, exchanges and uh, where you're putting your money and these crypto lend programs and things like that. It's just Investing in the coins enough, I think, is enough risk right there, but also great possible gains without getting into all of these extra things. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these exchanges and how things are going and where you're putting your coins. Where do you hold your Dogecoin? Give the video a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate the support. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.